Tony Curry was another 70s artist who painted in broad strokes. A midfield player who started with Watford and then served Sheffield United, Leeds and England. Curry couldn't resist writing his own script. A bit like Marsh, with whom he came face to face for a bit of fun in the hurly-burly of league action. Curry could make goals, but he could also score them. That's a beautiful goal from Flynn to Woodward. And it's Curry, a brilliant goal! Tony Curry. Curry! Oh, he's got it! Tremendous header from Tony Curry. Coming in, Curry! Woodward. And Curry in on the near post. Curry, yes! And the ball now with Gould. As Curry was in the way. And Woodward kept it in and found Curry. Field and Kamak to the left. Still Curry. What about that? A quality goal by a quality player. That quality got Curry into the England team. He won 17 caps and played under three managers, Ramsey, Reevy and Greenwood. Oh, that's dangerous. Curry, 2-2. Curry was a superb striker of the ball, whether it was with his club or his country. Watson and Dwyer tangling again. Curry now. Curry shot. Oh! Well, right out the blue by Tony Curry. Here's Curry. Hankin. Flint. Maidley. Graham. Greeny. Clark. Curry! After Leeds, Curry had a spell at Queen's Park Rangers, where he was their captain in the FA Cup final replay of 1982. In appearance and in style, he was one of those striking characters who stood out in the 70s as his own man in what had become a somewhat faceless game. Perhaps the biggest non-conformist of them all was Frank Worthington, the king of clubs whose idol was Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. Frank played for 11 different teams and even more managers, refusing to change his style for any of them. He started with Huddersfield, where he figured in their first division days in the early 70s. Then it was Leicester, where Worthington played the best football of his career and won eight England caps. Next stop, Bolton for a couple of years, and more goals. Then it was hijinks at Birmingham. And for less than a year, back to his Yorkshire roots with Leeds United. Still making the game look easy, he stayed just six months at Sunderland. Before joining Laurie McMenemy's collection of golden oldies at Southampton. Frank's touch never deserted him, nor his exhibitionist nature as he went to the seaside to play for Brighton. Worthington's career wound down with Tranmere, Preston and Stockport here, where he took his total of league goals to 234. But the two goals that gave him most pleasure were those he scored for England. When Frank Worthington made his exit, the game lost one of its most uninhibited entertainers.